Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net, where I teach beginners the skills they need to get their first software development job, building Windows and web apps for the world's best companies as quickly as possible. In this lesson, I'm going to take another roundabout way of showing you another iteration statement, the while statement. And to demonstrate this, we're going to actually open up a text file off the hard drive and read each line of the text file displaying it in a console window, of course, uh, until we get to the end of the file. So beyond the specifics of using a while iteration statement and reading data from a text file, uh, there are several key ideas and we're going to cover uh, things like how to add other files to our project, how to work with null values, how to change the properties of things using that properties window, and a lot more. All right, so let's get started by creating a new project make sure visual c sharp console application and we're going to call this project uh, the read text file while project click ok and the first thing that we want to do is start with the solution explorer and what i want to do in uh ha with the project selected i'm going to right click the project and select add new item and there's several ways to add a new item to your project this is just one that i prefer right click on the project file on the project name select add new item that'll bring up the add new item dialog and what i want to do is scroll down to near the bottom where we have a text file option and i want to change the default name from text file one to simply values.txt and then click the add button. And then notice what happens. We get a new file in our project and the, the values.txt file is open in the main area. So now I have two tabs open, the program.cs file where we've been doing all of our work up to this point and then the values.txt file. And in this file, what I wanna do is put um, some, some numbers or just some values in each line. So four, eight, 15, 16, 23 and 42 all right and I'm going to click save all so the next thing that I want to do is open up the program.cs and recall if it's not already open in a tab you can just double click it and it will open it up in the main area and what I want to do is type in some code and so make sure you follow along with me Okay, so as you see on my screen, I have a problem. The code will not run. Um, we can see that the stream reader has a red squiggly line indicating that we're gonna be unable to compile this application until we fix it. The problem is that C-sharp cannot resolve the word stream reader. In other words, it has no idea what we're referring to here. The problem is that stream reader doesn't live in any of the default namespaces in our project. In fact, it lives in a namespace called system.io. And we don't currently have that. Uh, we haven't told our application uh, where to look for this class name of stream reader. We haven't told it to look in a namespace called system.io. And I'll explain what namespaces are in a future lesson, but for now, just know that we're gonna need to fix this before we can continue. So before we fix this, let me explain what each line of code is trying to do. So in line number 13, we're using the stream reader object to open up the values.txt file. And we create a new variable called my reader of type stream reader. So a stream reader kind of works like a straw, a uh, little by little, line by line, it will suck in data out of the values.txt file into our program where it can be processed or in our case, simply print to screen. So then in line 14, we declare an empty string called line, the line variable. 
Uh, and then, beginning in line 16, we'll iterate through that code block defined between line 16 and 20. We'll iterate through it as long as that line uh, variable is not set to null. Now, null is a difficult concept for beginners to remember. A null value means that it has an unknown or indeterminate value. Uh, however, an empty string is not unknown and it's not indeterminable. So these are not the same and therefore we would expect line number 15 to continue to execute until we reach the very end of the values.txt file, uh, at which point our uh, line variable will be set to null and we will exit out of the while loop. All right. So the while iteration statement will continue to execute that block of code until the statement inside of it, uh, its open and close parentheses, evaluates to false. Unlike the for and the for each, what happens inside of the code block directly affects the flow of the code in the while iteration statement. So if you recall, in the for each, we just said once for every item in our array, or with the for iteration statement, we had a preset number of times, uh, whether it be 10 or 12 or the length of an array, we would go through a preset number of times, but not so with a while statement. What happens inside the while statement, in this case the read line, will dictate whether we continue another loop or whether we exit out. All right. All right, so then in line number um, 18, we set our line variable to the value that's contained in one entire line of the values.txt file. So since we typed a single value in each line, 4, 8, 15, 16, etc., uh, each of those values are retrieved using the stream reader's read line method and then stored into the line variable. Uh, so, once again, we'll ensure that the line is not null. If it is, that means we've reached the end of the file and there's no there's no value to process. Uh, so, um, as we've alluded to a couple of times already, the while code block will continue to execute until read line retrieves the end of the file and sets the line to a null value. So, then after the while statement, we need to close the file. And failure to close the file can leave a reference to the file open and prevent other users or applications uh, application processes from accessing that file at least until the computer is rebooted or some similar drastic action is performed. And then uh, line number, uh, so line number 22 accomplishes this by simply calling the stream readers close method which says close off all ties that you have to any files. It'll release its hold on the file and then you can uh, continue on. So, but before we execute this application, we obviously need to resolve that little red squiggly line under Stream Reader. As I mentioned earlier, the problem is that the C Sharp compiler can't resolve the word Stream Reader to its full name. Its full name is System.io.StreamReader. So, to easily fix this problem, place your mouse cursor anywhere on uh, inside that word or you can hover your mouse cursor over there for a little bit and you see a little window pop up underneath of the S and stream reader and then when I put my mouse cursor down on that little window a little arrow appears and when I click that little arrow you can see we get a little contextual menu that offers to add a using statement uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that now notice that there are some other things that we can do here for example I can choose to have it type out system.io.streamreader or it can even generate a new class for streamreader definitely don't want to do that just yet um, so I can for example let me choose the second option first just to kind of show you what it looks like okay so I've resolved this first stream reader because I've used its full name it's essentially beginning, middle, and last name. And I'll do the same over here as well to resolve that uh, red squiggly line. And now the application should execute. So let me go ahead and run the app. And I'll get another error. So before I, before I talk about that error, what I wanna do is show another, the other option that we can use. So I'm going to go back, get that little contextual menu to pop up. There we go. And then I'm going to choose using system.io. Now watch the first five lines of code at the very top. 
When I choose that, notice that it added this in line three and it adds them in alphabetical order. So it kind of reordered things here. And now it resolved both, both of the red squiggly lines. And there's a lot more I could say about a using statement. I could say a lot more about namespaces. I don't want to say uh, talk about them at length just yet. Know that we can use that little contextual menu that pops up in order to add a using statement to resolve uh, references to classes that have not already been added by our console uh, application um, project template. All right. So at any rate now, this should work, but we already noted that there was another problem. And uh, we get a new unhandled exception of type file not found exception. All right, so what could that possibly be? Well, the problem is that uh, the file is in our project directory, the values.txt files in our project directory, but it was never copied to the bin.debug directory. And to prove that, let's go to the documents, let's go to Visual Studio 2013 projects folder, read text file while and we'll go into the project folder and we can see here's our values.txt file we're going to look in our bin debug folder but we don't see that values.txt file anywhere in there all right so uh, we have to explicitly tell visual studio to copy the values.txt file into the target directory the bin debug folder and we'll do that using the solution explorer and the properties window all right, so if you don't already have it selected in the Solution Explorer, make sure you select it. And then look below. The properties are now in reference to this selection that we have in the Solution Explorer. So all these properties apply to value .tx, values.txt. All right, and you can see that there's this little copy to output directory uh, property. And currently for the file, it's set to do not copy. Now, if we were to look at the options by clicking to the right hand side, there's a drop down list of do not copy, copy always, or copy only if newer. Uh, there's really no reason in this particular situation not to choose copy always. So in other words, we will copy it every time we recompile the application uh, into the debug folder. We want to also copy the values.txt file into that debug folder as well. All right, so what's the difference between copy always and copy if newer? Well, copy if newer will only be copied over if there has been a change to the file. Either one of those will work in this situation. Since I have it in the textual version of this, uh, of this uh, lesson, I'm gonna go ahead and use the copy if newer option there as well, okay? So now whenever we run the application, it should have copied that values.txt file. It should have then looked for it in its directory, in the same directory where the executable is at, found it, read in each of the values, and then printed them to the screen and then exited out correctly. And as you can see, it's done that. Awesome. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this lesson. I know there's some mysteries uh, surrounding that using statement some mysteries surrounding namespaces. Trust me, we're gonna to get to all of that a little bit later. Uh, at least for the moment, you know how to resolve these types of namespace issues that might pop up in future code examples. Uh, why it happens, well, we'll explain that in a little bit. Okay, so we covered a couple of important concepts here. First of all, um, hopefully, you've got another iteration statement under your belt. Uh, you'll use the while iteration statement when there's an indeterminate number of times that you'll need to iterate through a block of code. And that's unlike the for statement where we knew for sure up front how many times that we were going to, uh, to loop through the block of code based on the conditions that we were going to check. Uh, so that's really the difference between the two. You can see that there's a need for both of those situations and therefore that's why you have two or three different types of iteration statements. Uh, we learned about the stream reader class. I compared it to a straw that allows us to suck in data line by line from a text file using its read line method. And then we closed our connection, our hold of the text file using the close method to release it. And while we were talking about the stream reader class, we saw how we need to help the C Sharp compiler resolve references to classes by providing a using statement for the class's namespace, or at least providing it the entire name of the class, not just its casual name or its 
it's the class name. We need to provide it the na full namespace, like system.io. Stream reader in this case, okay. Uh, and I haven't told you the full story about all that yet, but and we are not actually not going to be able to put it off much longer. We're getting really close to it. We also talked about null values. We said that they were an indeterminate or unknown value, and how that's different from an empty string. An empty string is empty. We know that, but a null value we just don't know what the value is, okay? And then we saw how we can add additional items to our projects. In this case, we added a text file. We learned how to set properties uh, for something, anything, in this case, that text file in the properties window. Uh, and in that particular case, we set the copy operation uh, to, the, uh, to always or um, only copy whenever that file is newer into the debugger release folder. Okay, so uh, that wraps up this lesson. You're doing great. Let's continue on. We'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.